sea otter. Um, yeah, it happened. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, Sea Otter is a multi-day bicycle festival. It lasts Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and what happens is there's all kinds of bike disciplines within this event. First of all, it's a massive expo. It's basically the next big trade show for 2022, featuring a million different brands from a million different cycling disciplines. The second thing is it's a bike race, and it's not just one bike race, it's got every kind, road, mountain, dual slalom, downhill, gravel. It's such an intense event that if you spend any amount of time there, by the end, you feel just tired. And for me, someone who didn't even do the event, I didn't race, I didn't work the expo, I didn't do any of those things. I was there to document it all. I was wiped out. So Sea Otter is located in Monterey, California. It's a beautiful, beautiful venue at the Laguna Seca Raceway. Uh, and it has this atmosphere that's a bit carnival, a bit of a party, a bit of a business expo, and a lot of bikes. Everywhere is bikes. So who goes to these events? Well, there's sort of a bunch of different categories, and I'm not in any of them. But first of all, a lot of people go to Sea Otter to race their bike. It's first and foremost a bicycle event. So you have all the bike racers, all the teams, and their support staff. So that is one main category. The other one is all the vendors. So every brand that is unveiling a product or wants to promote themselves has some sort of booth or tent or 10 by 10 or 10 by 30, whatever the size may be. And they go there to promote their products. The next group is the media. They're walking up and down the booth to figure out what's new, what's newsworthy, what's great to report on. The last group and probably the most important group is the, the fans, the public, the spectators who pay $20 or whatever the cost is to get in and walk up and down and to check stuff out. They may not have brought their bike, they may not have raced, but they're just bicycle enthusiasts and they're the ones who are interacting with these brands all the time. So where do I fit in? That's a tough one. If you've ever played the game Grand Theft Auto, my experience was not that different from playing the video game. Now, it doesn't have any of the violence or the corruption in it, but I thought of myself as someone who has a mission. And in addition to having that mission, I have all these side missions that I need to go on. And if I do these side missions and I complete them successfully, uh, that's my thing I can check off my list, I get paid and I move on to the next thing. So I was a bit of a jack of all trades at this event. First and foremost, I wanted to shoot content for VeloWorthy. That's kind of the primary mission. The second thing was to cover the event. Now this is the first stop of the Lifetime Series event. It's a big one and it was the cross country mountain bike race. I covered that or at least tried to. The other side mission was to do jobs for athletes and brands that I had worked out a deal with that I basically shoot and document content for them and then if I do it correctly I get paid. In addition to all the side missions, there's sub side missions. It's seeing old friends. It's, and I hate this word, but it's networking. It's meeting up with past partners that I've dealt with. It's occasionally spotting the cycling celebrity that I get to geek out over. It is seeing the new products myself and figuring out what's worthy of shooting, talking about, and checking out. I had about nine different side missions on this and my goal is to complete them all. The way I was set up though was it was just me, the camera, and me walking around every day from 8 a.m. till about 5 p.m. when people started to break down and just constantly be overstimulated by bicycles. I was lucky enough to be with the Scratch Labs crew who go to this event every single year. And they usually rent a big Airbnb because there's a lot of people that go there. And they have such a good time after the event. It's a work day for them as well because they're one of the vendors 
dealing with the public, trying to introduce the brand, passing out products, selling products. Uh, and in this house, we had Alan Lim and Chef Bijou who were cooking and making everyone feel welcome and hosting people. Alan and I have been coming to the Sea Otter since the late 1900s. That's and right. it's one of those events that is just a zoo. So in order to help and re-nourish ourselves, Alan has something pretty badass on the menu. Yeah, tonight we actually have a turmeric, ginger, Mo Wilson garlic. Oh, Mo Wilson garlic? Mo Wilson garlic. I, pe I chopped the garlic. Oh, okay. And the ginger. You don't know a garlic the Mo corn? Wilson box. No, garlic. hell no. <laughs> turmeric coconut, chicken, as well as a fried tofu version. It's gonna go in the oven for about an hour-ish, an hour and a half. Okay. And then... When you first came here, that... that was one of the things I was looking forward to, it was eating dinner every night. I know people take that for granted, but if you've ever seen some of my previous footage, you'll know that food is a main, main component of going to a lot of these bike events, and good food for that matter. The other thing is, Mo Wilson was sort of embedded with the Scratch crew at this event, and she was one of the favorites to win the, the first round of the Lifetime event. She's coming off some previous wins at the Grasshopper, a second at Mid-South, and she is never not podiumed this year. Her goal is to obviously win the entire Lifetime event. We'll see if that happens, because we'll be documenting her as well. But it was really cool to have her in the house with us, watching her prep and get ready and definitely root for her throughout the race. The people who make up the Lifetime series of races are 30 men and 30 women who've applied and gotten in to race the series. The series is based on who wins the most amount of races or who places highest, and then the winner at the end competes for a $250,000 prize. Now that $250,000 is split among the riders, meaning the winner gets about $25,000. Thank you first time in 20 years in a different kit, a different setup. Oh. To see you at the front of this. It's an honor to see you here. I think I think we can get a little bit of love for a little bit of Thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about the men and women start separately but race on the same course and even in this case the same distance. At Sea Otter, the land is owned by the Bureau of Land Management, which controls the area, which means that Lifetime was very strict about not letting people on the course. In fact, the only way to get out there is to walk by foot, or if you're lucky enough to have a bike or even an e-bike, that was one way to document. I had neither of those, so I was only able to capture the start as well as the finish. Come on, Mo! Come on, Mo, get on it! While the race was happening, I also was shooting for Bonk Breaker, so I had to run to the other side of the Sea Otter venue, film that and do my documentation there, and then come back to try and finish this part of the course as well as the finish of the race itself. Hannah, move up, go get him! Yes, Garda, we saw her number two coming into the final quarter. Yeah, no. Hell yeah! To the pavement. This should be Sophia. Gomez and Villafon! Yes. Oh. Well, and just behind Sophia, this is going to be our early leader in the Stars and Stripes jersey. Bring it home, Alexis Scarda in your bronze medal position on the day. So, a great ride by those top three women, Wilson, Villafon, and Scarda rolling it through. Looks like we've got Leah Davidson just making her way onto the pavement. Big I'm like, the whole really time I'm thinking, I'm gonna get more Seriously. Yeah. I'm like, I'm thinking. I'm like, I'm thinking. 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 I'm I really like to race bikes as well, and I'm one of their sponsored athletes, so um, I definitely do long training rides during the day, and I work kind of weird hours. I 
have an interesting schedule. I would not call it a single nine to five. Um, but yeah, I feel really grateful to have the support of um, you know my manager, my team, and everyone that I work with. It's great. And I've been eating a little too much this week with more rocks and uh -huh. uh, this one, so yeah, the legs are a little tired today. <laughs> Yeah, I had a good start, and then I was like, oh no, it's not the day. I just wrote by myself, so which I guess is probably a good thing. I need to Man, it was such a fun race. It started super fast, just like I anticipated. I felt really good. I was on the front a lot of the first uh, part of the lap. Um, a couple of us were able to get away a few times, but it just kept coming back together. And right before the final climb on lap one, I slid out probably going 20 plus miles per hour. It started out fast, which I thought it would. Um, I was a little surprised by the sand. I didn't realize we're hitting sand. So that kind of mixed things up a bit, new crashes. Uh, so I ended up in the single track, probably 25th, which wasn't great. But you know, you just make do with where you are. Um, was so, the plan to just pick people off at that point? At that point, yeah. I wanted to go into the single track, like top 10, but yeah, I didn't. Um, so anyways, yeah, I definitely would lose time on the downhill and then pull people back on the uphill. But by the second lap, I was getting better, so I was pretty happy with that. And I got to ride behind some good wheels for a while and learn. Um, yeah, so it just felt like a big adventure out there. Yeah, technical ability, let's bring it on. That's the part of the season. Like some yeah. girls are so good technically and some are better with engines and then some who are coming in first are both. <laughs> Did you, uh, does this make you want to do more mountain biking? It was fun. It makes me want to go ride that like with my mom. Like by my like just flowy because it was so fun. But the whole time I was like, don't crash, don't crash. It's faster if you don't crash. So like right. take your time and people behind are like, ah! <laughs> The men's race also featured 30 of the biggest gravel or all-around cyclists for the series, including world tour riders, Olympians, and professionals. They were lining up as well, and it was also a difficult task, so I was only able to film the very start of the race and the finish, not being able to get out on course. Two, one, and you are off and running. Best of luck to all of our open men riders out there on the course today. On to the home straight, this is the man of the hour, Keegan Swenson, taking out a huge, huge victory. A great ride by both Swenson and Finster Wall. The opening series, this is Alex Wild. I'll tell you, Alex understands. Fucking hell. Yeah, that's. Uh... No. I remember you. <laughs> Good job, guys. How was it out there? Brutal. <laughs> that was brutal. Was, I have no words. I left it all out there. Any uh, issues? No, nothing really. Just, just, just a slog. Yeah, definitely. It was a long race. I kind of eased up after the first lap because I was like, I don't know if I can hang on. And then final climb, we caught five, six people, me and Stetna, and just hammered, hammered into the top 20 for the finish. So stoked with it. You okay, man? I don't know. I can't really hold the bar so well. I saw that crash. That sucks. Yeah, that was frustrating. Yeah, I think Kiel's my one of my best friends, but that guy's a little bit of a liability in every race he finds up. Oh, how'd it go for you, man? Uh, I think they said. 17. Nice. Yeah. Adam Roberge literally yeah. caught me right before the oh, finish. Oh, I was <laughs> chasing Adam like the last 10k. Uh, yeah, it's really nice. oh, oh, yeah, Do you know where uh, Medic 10 is? Uh, I don't know. Do you know where a Medic 10 is? Yeah, yeah, we were, we're yeah. Yeah. Do you want them to come to you? Do you want to go to them? Oh, that's a real mountain bike race out there. That was hard. Did it get, did it spread out? quickly and then everyone was kind of doing their own race um yeah more or less i think that we had a big group of about 12 together for for maybe half the race but uh the the first the drop-in was really sketchy 
Uh, there was a big crash and uh, it was fast and you know, the whole nine yards, man. What's this guy saying? Huh? Uh, just, we're gonna go. We're gonna retire, and we're gonna move. He's just making fun of me because he was able to crash me from behind. I, I ran right into him and took him out. Well he, well, he put the pressure on me emotionally, and that's the problem. <laughs> I feel like Sea Otter is one of those events that everybody needs to go to. At the same time, it's one of those things that everybody loves to complain about, but when the event is over, you can't wait till next year. And that's exactly the feeling I had. I came home tired after a seven hour drive. I was covered in dirt. I didn't shower. All of my gear, my backpacks, clothing was covered in dust. The wind kicks up and kicks dust everywhere. And you swear off the event. And then every time the event is over, you can't wait till the next one because it's such a massive experience. And really what it comes down to is the community, the people, the excitement, and really the anticipation of great things to come in the sport of cycling. Please subscribe, comment, sign up for the notifications. Let me know. Um, have you been to Sea Otter? If so, what was your experience like? It is so different from every other cycling event that I really want to stress that you've got to check it out. And until next time, stay Velo-worthy.